welcome to this masterclass organised by NIPANC, the Northern Irish Charity uh, to raise awareness of pancreatic cancer. Uh, this particular session is aimed at primary care, uh, focusing on early warning strategies uh, for GPs. I'm Jackie Thornton, I'm a freelance health journalist for the BMJ and The Lancet, and I'm joined by two very eminent surgeons. We have uh, Tom Diamond, who is the president of NIPANC, uh, and also uh, Mark Taylor, who is a HPB surgeon in Belfast. So what are the aims of this session? We want to raise awareness of the signs and symptoms for this devastating cancer uh, for GPs who may only uh, come across a diagnosis uh, a handful of cases in their career. They have huge workloads too, there's so much going on in primary care and we want to enable them to have the tools to get these early, important early diagnosis when they uh, need to. I have some personal experience unfortunately of pancreatic cancer. Uh, my father Brian uh, was diagnosed two days before Christmas uh, in 2009. Uh, sadly his uh, cancer was advanced uh, there was no operation he could have, uh, he only had uh, palliative uh, chemotherapy. That's why it's vital to get these early diagnoses as uh, soon as possible. So I want to turn uh, to Tom Diamond uh, first of all. Uh, Tom, can you tell me a little bit about NIPANC? Well, I was first asked to join NIPANC last year after, it, after I retired from hepatobiliary and pancreatic surgery. It's a new and emerging charity. We're growing rapidly. It's a charity I'm very proud to be involved with. And we have three main aims essentially. First of all, very importantly, to support patients and their families who are uh, unfortunately troubled with pancreatic cancer in the, in the family. Secondly, to, ra to raise funds for research into this condition. And thirdly, to raise awareness in the general population and also in the medical profession about this cancer and how we can hopefully improve the prognosis of it with earlier diagnosis and earlier treatment options. So Mark Taylor, what are the latest developments uh, in pancreatic cancer diagnosis and also in treatment? In Northern Ireland, Jackie, we see 270 new cases of pancreatic cancer per year. And it is well known that it is the silent killer. And the reason for that is the diagnosis is often at a late stage. So only 20% of those individuals coming forward have disease that we can surgically take away. And so throughout the world, there is major emphasis in ways to bring about early diagnosis. Such events uh, as this are extremely helpful. What symptoms are there that might allow our general practitioner an earlier chance of sending for investigation to confirm the diagnosis. We know throughout the world there are many people looking at biological markers to see if they can detect the tumour earlier. Uh, and an awful lot of research currently has been going into different ways to treat this condition. But it's a staggering statistic to know that at that late stage of diagnosis you've only a 2% five-year survival chance, whereas at an early stage, at a stage one or two, you could have a 33% chance of survival at five years. So the key in many aspects of the management of pancreatic cancer is not just what treatments we have, but is there a way of getting the diagnosis much earlier than we currently do? And of course, I think there have been recent developments in treatment though which means that actually people more people are getting successful treatment if it's spotted earlier oh absolutely and there are several areas of of development one is we have known for some time that surgery followed by chemotherapy improves survival but there's a great deal of work currently going on looking at treatment with chemotherapy and or radiotherapy up front then surgery and then further chemotherapy. And in borderline resectable pancreatic cancer, in other words, the tumour is wrapped to a vessel. 
giving that neoadjuvant treatment up front has changed a five year survival from 6.5% up to 20% in borderline resectable. There is still some controversy, Jackie, about clearly resectable pancreatic cancer, whether neoadjuvant treatment is beneficial or not. But certainly there is many, many centers throughout the world looking at that very question. And it may be that in the future, all patients with pancreatic cancer will have neoadjuvant chemotherapy and then surgery and then further chemotherapy as we go forward. There are other dimensions taking place at the minute, even in Northern Ireland. The Ulster University has produced a drug therapeutic delivery system called Sonotarg, which is delivering chemotherapy directly to the tumour, activated by ultrasound to cause the tumour not only to have chemotherapy in there, but to have free radical response to cause necrosis of it. So exciting times in pancreatic cancer, but we have got to do better. So let's take a step back. What are the early warning signs and symptoms that should ring alarm bells uh, to GPs? Every GP is aware of painless obstructive jaundice i.e. the person who becomes yellow in the eyes develops dark urine and pale bile motions. That's well recognised. It is really difficult. 270 people with pancreatic cancer per year and every single general practitioner sees patients with dyspepsia or upper abdominal pain every day. But three areas um, that are really worth noting and this is something that all of my pancreatic surgical colleagues throughout the United Kingdom have shared. Number one, the patient over the age of 50 who develops diabetes, particularly that individual who does not have metabolic syndrome. So that thin individual over the age of 50, new onset diabetes, just think, could it be something else? Secondly, the person who keeps coming back after treatment with acid tablets with upper abdominal pain, who's not getting any relief from a proton pump inhibitor or the like. Think, why are they not responding? And the final group would be that group of individuals who have upper back pain. Lower back pain, very common, but upper back pain that is persistent, particularly when they have unexplained weight loss as well. Just think, why is that? So in summary, New onset diabetes in the over 50, abdominal pain not responding to conventional treatment, and that upper back pain particularly in association with unexplained weight loss. Tom Diamond, the term type th 3 diabetes is now being used uh, in this sphere. Can you explain you know, what it means uh, and what do we need to know about it? Yes, this is a term used to, to describe a type of secondary diabetes which occurs secondary to other conditions in the pancreas, such as chronic pancreatitis, cystic fibrosis, and sometimes pancreatic cancer. And it can also occur in patients who have had a, had a significant part of their pancreas removed. So unlike the patients with type 1 or type 2 diabetes, but particularly type 2 diabetes, the type 3 diabetes patients often aren't overweight. In fact, they may have lost weight due to chronic pancreatitis or even a pancreatic cancer. So in general practice, it's important to be aware of these sort of patients and think of the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer or any other pancreatic condition such as chronic pancreatitis. And is this type 3 uh, diabetes picked up in the same way as type 1 and 2 and linked to blood sugar levels? Yeah, it usually presents with the same symptoms and in general practice it may be picked up with a, a standard blood sugar test. And it's particularly important to be aware of this type of condition in patients in the fifth decade of life and over because they're the age groups where chronic pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer are more common. And how can GPs differentiate between type 2 and type 3? Well, the type 2 patient will usually be the fairly typical patient with a very high body mass index. The type 3 patient will usually be a patient with another condition such as chronic pancreatitis, but that's also the sort of patient in whom to be suspicious about the possibility of an underlying pancreatic cancer. 
Tom Diamond, I want to come on to diagnostics. Um, what about the patient pathway in this area? What is best practice uh, in the context of a very stretched health system? Well, I think the problem for GPs in terms of early diagnosis of pancreatic cancer is that they will be faced with a lot of patients with upper abdominal symptoms, relatively non-specific symptoms. And I suppose the main pathway for those sort of patients traditionally would have been for an upper GI endoscopy and an ultrasound scan, ultrasound looking for gallstones. But in fact, a CT scan is a much more accurate scan in terms of picking up a cancer of the pancreas at an early stage. So I think the message for general practice would be if you have direct referral for CT scanning, uh, it would be worth considering it, particularly in the over 50s with red flag symptoms or, or with the symptoms that were mentioned earlier, such as non-specific pain associated with back pain. Uh, and uh, consider earlier referral for CT for those patients, perhaps. And I think maybe some GPs are aware of CA-199 blood tests. Are these useful? Yes, CA-199 is a tumour marker for pancreatic cancer, but unfortunately this tumour marker has too many false positives and false negatives to be very useful either as a screening tool for pancreatic cancer or for diagnosis of it. So it actually isn't very useful in the early diagnosis. It is more useful for us in terms of follow-up after treatment. Mark Taylor, what are your peers suggesting needs to happen in primary care to prevent the light diagnoses we've been talking about in pancreatic cancer? Firstly, Jackie, it would be that our primary care practitioners get the same access to CT scans as we enjoy in secondary care. Um, it is really important that the CT scan is performed early. Ultrasound scanning is of no benefit in evaluation of the pancreas because it's very difficult to visualise the pancreas. So it is CT scan. So our counterparts in England in primary care have ease of access to referral to CT scan and that's something we need to uh, address in Northern Ireland and that is that the GP who has the patient in front of them doesn't have to go down a very archaic pathway to get the diagnosis. In other words, they can't organise the CT so they refer into the system to then get the CT organised. That's number one. Number two is that always feel that you can phone a friend. Um, Northern Ireland's a small place. We have one pancreatic centre in Northern Ireland uh, and we have a wonderful team of colleagues, not just the surgeons, but our clinical nurse specialists. So if there is ever a doubt about a patient uh, or a suspicion based on some of the uh, symptoms we have talked about, then please refer in, phone up, ask anything that we can do to bring those stage three and four cancers back to stage one to two will have the ultimate benefit of an improved survival. Tom Diamond, you've been a specialist in pancreatic cancer surgery for 30 years, your whole career. What's your message to GPs to improve diagnosis? I think when I look back over my career in hepatobiliary and pancreatic surgery, the major factor I think that could be improved is earlier detection and earlier referral for patients with hepatobiliary conditions, particularly pancreatic cancer. Uh, we've heard today some of the symptoms that GPs can look out for, such as patients presenting with features in keeping with type 3C diabetes patients with abdominal pain associated with upper back pain and think of these uh, symptoms particularly in the over 50s because they're the patients most likely to be diagnosed with this condition. So Mark Taylor, in a nutshell, what's your advice to GPs faced with a patient with non-specific upper abdominal symptoms? Whilst I'm conscious that the majority of those patients will have benign disease, because it is a small percentage that will actually have pancreatic cancer. My advice will be the person returning with the same problems that isn't getting relief with conventional treatment, just stop and think, could it be that they have an underlying malignancy? And particularly with the pancreas, as Thomas said, with the back pain, with the 
type 3 diabetes with the unexplained weight loss and the failure to remedy their tummy pain just think about imaging to rule out a pancreatic cancer that's been a fascinating and informative uh, session uh, with surgeons Tom Diamond and Mark Taylor about the importance of early detection of pancreatic cancer and how that early detection can lead to uh, improved survival rates. If you're concerned about pancreatic cancer, then uh, please uh, visit the website for NIPANC. That is www.nipank.org. Uh, and there's lots and lots of information there and also how you can get involved if you want to raise funds for this important charity. But thanks very much for listening and thanks again to Tom Diamond and to Mark Taylor. Thank you.